We're off and running in the Ag Commodity Trade. Let's take a look at what the grains are doing right out of the gate this morning. We'll begin with the corn. And this is what's going on. We have December corn a little softer. We're at 6.88 and a quarter per bushel. That would be down four and a half cents in the early going here today. That would be off its overnight high by roughly about four cents. On soybeans, you have November three and three quarters cents higher. We're at 14.82 and a half, about seven cents off of its overnight high. We're about a nickel off of our early low here today. Now, looking at the wheat in Chicago, we have December unchanged at 860 and a half. How's that for a non-event? In Kansas City, you have December six and three quarters higher. We're at 940 and a half, and hmm, that's interesting, almost on the high of the day. In spring wheat in Minneapolis, December going down by a penny and three quarters at 929 and a half. I want to welcome aboard here Mr. Chris Swift of Swift Trading. He's based in Nashville. Interesting uh, market movement here this morning. We've got something for everybody, bulls and bears, corn a little weaker, and, uh, well, that Kansas City wheat all by itself is starting to take off a little bit. That's kind of intriguing. Is that related to the dry weather continuing in the high plains? You know, Marlon, I think it's a little bit of a combination of everything. Like you said, everybody's got a, a story to tell today, and uh, from yesterday's inflationary news that we got that really uh, impacted the equities markets to uh, we were discussing earlier about the railroad strike potential later on this week. And, and that inability to be able to move corn in and out is very significant, especially as we go into harvest here. Um, so it's, um, there's just a little bit of everything for everybody today. Well, what's your take? Uh, you referenced the uh, CPI number that came out yesterday, and, and of course, everybody admits that it caused the uh, equity markets to go into a steep sell-off yesterday. I think it was down like 1,200 points at the close. Now, today, uh, it's not doing much of anything. We had the PPI number that came out, and it was also not anything to really write home about. It just uh, confirmed that we did have 8.7% inflation at the wholesale level over the past year. Um, but it doesn't seem to be having much impact here on the trade, does it, today? No, and probably not. Y yesterday did a month's worth of trading in you know, a, a few hours. So I would imagine a lot of today is going to be spent uh, refiguring money, how to get those margin calls met for a lot of people, and, and just kind of see what the next move is of the Fed. And do they go very aggressively and go a full 1%? Are they going to stick with three quarters of a percent? Or if they come out real dovish with only a half, I think everybody would look at that and go, well, that's still not doing anything to curb this inflation. So what if they go a full point? What, what does that mean for consumer demand for the meat? I think it could be terrible. I mean, if you really think about it, they've already raised it up very sharply in a very short period of time. And they're, they're, as best I understand, what they're trying to do is quell consumer and business spending. When in all honesty, the government spends probably as much, if not more, than all of us combined together. So they can stomp us out and make us not want to buy anything. But yet, on the other hand, they're still inflating with all of the government subsidies that they're pouring out every day. Well, we have the soybean trade relatively flat here this morning. And, uh, of course, we're getting ready to get the crop in the ground in South America right now. They're expecting record acreage, aren't they, in Brazil? They are. And, you know, the, the weather seems to be changing ever so slightly, too. And the aspects of having three years of the La Nina are not very good. So maybe we're able to come out of this and get some improving weather in South America there that would definitely benefit all of the world for their supply needs. Well, of course, we have China in lockdown. Uh, gosh, depending on who you listen to, it could be anywhere from 60 to 80 million people that are just basically locked up on account of covid and uh, that has to have a detrimental effect on overall outside demand, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely it does, and energy especially, because they're unable to produce a lot of the things that they need. The people can't go to work. So imagine if, if grains are really kind of this good, especially the corn and bean market, with them under lockdown, when they come out, they're going to need more energy, they're going to need more grains, and they're going to need more of everything to rebuild and, and put back together the economy that's been very slow to them the last se several months. So West Texas crude oil right now is $2.02 .02 higher this morning, and October now trading at eighty nine thirty one per barrel as we speak. That's about $0.32 cents off our high of the day. All right, we'll come back and we'll take a look at our livestock trade here on a Wednesday morning with Chris Swift right after this. Well, now let's take a look at the livestock trade where we have mixed action going on in grains. Let's see what live cattle are up to. Our quotes are provided by Bar Chart. 
uh, if you listen very closely, just just listen, you can kind of hear it snoring. It's it's not doing anything. I think it's asleep. October live cattle, one tick lower, <laughs> two and a half cents lower at 144.77. December, that's the most exciting one on the first four months, and it's only moving three ticks. That's seven cents lower at 150.37. Don't want to wake it up here. February down two cents at 154.70. Look at the trading range on that. It's not even 40 cents on that February contract. My goodness. On the feeder cattle trade, let's go over there. All right, let's zoom in on October. Here we go. 180.70 is the last trade. So that would be up a whole 17 cents on the day. Now, we did get as high as 181.37. And then we came off that by about 65 cents here. Uh, November feeders currently 15 cents higher at 182.50. Hold me back for the excitement. Now let's take a look at lean hogs. On the lean hog trade today, well, you have October one tick lower, two and a half cents lower at 95.72. Well, here you go. You have December lean hogs now 20 cents. Whoops, now 17 higher at 85.87. Let's go back to Chris Swift. Um, is the machine working today, Chris? <laughs> I think it is. I think everybody's just kind of taking a little pause in the meat markets. I, I noticed over the weekend that retail meat prices are still very elevated. When you look at year-over-year -year meat production, you're only down eight-tenths of a percent year-over-year. -year. And you're just getting a little softening aspect from the consumer because we were just told again yesterday the amount of inflation that they're having to deal with is significant, and we tend to look at our food items towards the tail end of our discretionary spending, and whatever's left over at the end of the month, that's what we tend to buy our groceries with. And right now, the way it looks is there's going to be a few less pennies left over at the end of the month to, to buy meat and, um, and uh, uh, food products. Well, let's take a look at that beef cutout value according to USDA yesterday afternoon. Uh, here we had some pressure on the beef cutouts. We had the choice and the select cuts actually going down yesterday. Uh, we had choice down 228. It was priced at 256.66. Well, it's getting further away from where it was a week ago because back then it was 260.47. So we're almost four dollars off of that now. Select cuts yesterday were down 218 at 233.58. The spread between them is now 23.08. Um, is that a sign of things to come on the beef cutouts? Well, I think what it tells us is it's a little more difficult to move the meat, and, and they're having to lower the price of it. I know that the restaurants have been really struggling with uh, employees and, and help to be able to handle the crowds in there. And with, with that, it almost kind of makes you not want to go to a restaurant because of the long waits that you have and some of the service issues that they're going through. And it's just going to take some more time to, to get through a lot of these factors that the inflationary aspect and employment aspect have created. Good point. All right. Well, thank you, Chris, for talking with us here today on a Wednesday. Chris Swift is with Swift Trading based in Nashville. Janet, that's a look at our markets. I'll turn it back to you.